I love a big, thick, juicy burger. It's tender, it's cooked to medium rare. It's almost perfection. But what I love about it is that crust on the outside, especially when it gets craggy and a little bit crisp. Today I'm gonna to make a burger that really is all about the crust. We're smashing burgers and it's so fast and so much fun. I'm gonna take you along for the ride. Now these cook really, really quickly as I said, so we're gonna work on all the other components before we actually get to the burger. Starting off with lettuce. Now you can choose any type of lettuce that you'd like. I'm going with good old classic iceberg here. I love the crunch and the refreshing flavor that it adds. Now I need to core this. So all you do is you smash the iceberg on your counter, just like that, flip it over, and you can actually dig out the core. Pretty easy. And I'm making burgers for two. I'm gonna take off this little petticoat of slightly wilted lettuce, get rid of that, and go for some of the more crispy pieces inside. So I'm just gonna put aside a couple of nice pieces, no browning. And now how about a nice juicy ripe tomato? Summer tomatoes are the best, but if you're buying these in the supermarket in the winter, look for those that are ripened on the vine. They taste a lot better. And when you're storing tomatoes at home, store them with this core side down. They'll actually age a little slower that way. If only that worked on everyone. So I'm gonna take a paring knife and just cut out this core. I'm holding the paring knife at an angle here can't smash a tomato to get rid of the core. And now I'm going to slice this tomato. If your knife is pretty dull, you can always use a serrated knife for this. All right. Now, one of the hallmarks of some really great smashed burgers out there is that special sauce that you put on the burger. And again, this is optional. If you just want to go for ketchup and mustard, go for it. But I'm going to make a little bit of a special sauce here. So we're starting off with some shallot. I need a tablespoon of minced shallot. Cut it in half with a peel on. Peel it. And then since I want this to be really pretty finely chopped, I'm going to make the cuts very close together. So I'm spacing my knife, oh, about an eighth of an inch or even less apart. And take your time, you see how my hand up here is nowhere near the blade. So now I'm going to do the same thing, go across here, and then just take it right over. Now I only need a tablespoon, that looks about right. Just get any real big pieces there. And I am going to measure this. Sometimes I don't measure, I'll just eyeball it because you have a good feel. But really this sauce is all about ratios, so I'm gonna tell you to measure. All right, who wants a pickle? We're not just gonna slice pickles here, we're actually going to add pickles to our special sauce. It's almost a take on a Russian dressing. So these are just dill pickles. I'm gonna spear one here. Set that jar aside for just a moment. Now similar to the shallot, I wanna finely chop this. And I only need about a teaspoon and a half. So I'm gonna cut these in half so I have a nice flat surface. And same thing as I did with the shallot. Just make horizontal cuts and then right across vertical. All right, and I need a teaspoon and a half of pickle. Teaspoon, and that looks like a half a teaspoon. Now I want to use a little bit of this brine as well. Obviously it's salted, it's brine, but it's got some great flavors in it too. So we're gonna use a half a teaspoon. Now of course we need a creamy sauce. So we're gonna use some mayonnaise. Use two tablespoons of mayonnaise and a little bit of ketchup. Got a teaspoon and a half of ketchup. And one of the hallmarks of a really good sauce is that it's tangy, it's salty, it's also a little bit sweet. So I'm gonna add some sugar. I've got an eighth of a teaspoon of sugar. Remember, ketchup is already pretty sweet. And an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. Or if you like it spicy, a little bit more. All right, let me just stir this together. That turns that nice kind of rosy hue. That looks lovely. You're gonna to wanna to make a lot of this too and it actually can stay in the fridge for a couple of days. Now let's talk about cheese. We are not using gourmet artisan cheese. We are using cheese that is individually wrapped in plastic. These were actually engineered to melt. So why not use science to our benefit? So here's some prep. All you have to do is unwrap the cheese. And what I like to do I will just fold that back over so that they stay nice and separated until I'm ready to use them. When seconds count, this 
pre-unwrapping of the cheese will come in handy. And let's talk about buns. Nice, soft buns. These are squishy, they've got a nice flavor, and you should be able to really compact them in your hands before you eat them. So I'm just going to split these, and then I'm just gonna put about a tablespoon of this sauce on each of the bun tops. Oh yeah. All right, what are we missing? How about some beef? Now I've got some ground beef that I picked up at the supermarket, eight ounces of ground beef here. Now, the reason that I am recommending that you get supermarket ground beef instead of grinding it at home yourself, that's because they tend to grind the beef pretty fine. It's actually pretty tightly compacted. That tight grind is actually working in our favor. It releases a sticky protein called myosin each time that they grind the meat. And we want that sticky protein to be released here because these burgers are very delicate. They're very thin. So we need it to add a little bit of cohesion. So this is eight ounces, again, of 80% lean. Now, that sounds a little bit fattier than we usually call for, but that's also by design. These burgers cook so quickly and they're very thin. They're cooked to almost well done. So you want a burger that has a bit of fat in it. So you can go with 80% lean up to 85% lean, but anything that's leaner than that is gonna give you a really dry burger. So I need to zero off my scale. I went ahead and lined it with a little bit of plastic wrap. I like to do that anytime I'm working with raw meat. And again, I need two ounce patties. And as I weigh them, I'm just gonna put them on this plate. So I've got the meat all portioned out here and I'm not gonna put these into patties. I'm just gonna shape them into loose balls at this point. I don't wanna compact the meat. We're gonna save the actual smashing and forming of the patties to when the burgers hit the pan. So that is all the prep, looking good. I'm gonna go wash my hands. It's time to start cooking and we're gonna heat up our pan. I'm using a great 12 inch cast iron skillet. It really heats up well. It's gonna give us just the right crust. I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of vegetable oil to my pan. It's really well seasoned, but every time you use a pan, it's a good idea to give it a little bit of oil and then just smear it around the bottom just to make sure that it goes into all of the pores of the pan. Now this is a cold pan. This is why I can do it without tongs. All right, and now I'm going to turn the burner to medium low. And I'm going to heat the pan for five minutes. Just started my timer there. Cast iron heats up really slowly and quite unevenly. So if you blast it with heat at the very start, you'll end up with some hot spots in your pan and cooler spots, obviously. So for more even heating, just over a medium low heat for a good five minutes. So while that's heating, let's talk a little bit about my saucepan here. Now we're using this as a burger press because we notice that when you go to press a burger using a spatula, your hand is offset from the spatula and you end up going in it at an angle and it's hard to get a really nice flat patty. So we're gonna use this saucepan, this is just a little saucepan here and I've wrapped some foil over it so that it can stay nice and clean. And I'm going to use this as a burger press. I'm gonna grab the sides of it and just press straight down. So we're just gonna wait for our pan to heat. So I'm starting to see a little bit of smoke in the pan. I know it's hot enough, it's preheated, so I'm going to turn up the heat to high. So I'm gonna take two of these mounds of meat. I gotta work fast here. So I'm gonna place them about three inches apart in the skillet. There we go. And then use that saucepan, I'm grabbing the sides, not the handle, to really smash these down. You don't have to worry too much about being very aggressive. We want these to stick to the skillet, so that's why we're smashing them in the pan. I'm gonna hit these with about an eighth of a teaspoon of kosher salt and a little bit of pepper to taste. And we're gonna let this first side go for two minutes so it can get some really beautiful brown color on that first side. All right, so these are looking great. Three quarters of the top of these patties are no longer pink. So that's a good indication that these are ready to be flipped. And you can see this spatula is necessary, a super thin one so that we can flip these over. Oh, look at that beautiful color and really get in there because the burgers are sticking to the pan. And again, we want that. Amazing, so only 15 seconds on the second side because the burgers are pretty much done at this point. All right, that's about 15 seconds. Let me slide this off heat. So now I'm gonna put these on our bottom buns. And now I'm going to put a slice of cheese right on top, start the melting process. And we'll work on our second batch of burgers. So same thing, 
Two minutes on this first side, flip it over, another 15 seconds on the second side. All right, that looks great. I'm gonna slide this off heat again. And the heat of these patties is just gonna finish melting all of that cheese. Oh, before I put the bun tops back on, I'm gonna add our fixings. A little bit of iceberg here. Let's weigh down this lettuce with a little bit of tomato. And now the top goes on. That's looking pretty good. All right. Now look at that. Those patties are all crust, still juicy. Oh, and the cheese is melted. Mmm. I just got a little hint of that pickle sauce in there. Mmm, nice and bright and tart. It's just the right amount of toppings. A little bit of tomato, a little bit of that crisp iceberg, and the cheese is melted just perfectly. I'm going to call that one smashing burger. And if you want to make smashed burgers at home, remember these keys. Use 80% lean ground beef, shape into two ounce mounds, and smash the burgers right in the skillet. From America's Test Kitchen at home, fast and fabulous smashed burgers. I'm gonna smash it in my mouth. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.